Why don't steak pies taste as good as they used to? Where's the beef? There's beef in the pie, inside the pie, but it's missing from somewhere else. There's two vital points that beef needs to be in the preparation and cooking of a perfect, beautiful, rich beef pie. I'm gonna show you where it's missing so you can put it back in. Beef chuck is a stewing beef, perfect for pie fillings. Is we're gonna stew this in a beautiful gravy for at least two hours. We're going to brown it, which we are, and put a crust on it. We wanna make sure that it's dry. And we're going to just cut this into bite-sized cubes. Very simple, right along here, about one inch, I guess they are. And there we have it, beef cubed, which sounds like a math professor's dinner. It's gonna taste great. Some people like to trim off this extra fat, that's fine. Next, we're simply going to season with a little kosher salt. Beef loves salt, plenty of it. Freshly ground black pepper goes on. And then, before we start frying this off, we're gonna put a little flour on it, and that's just all-purpose flour, and mix it all together. Get a great coating on these cubes of beef. This is part of the secret to a great pie filling. Don't be shy on the flour. Let's look at the ingredients and let's look at the secret here. So frying this off, it has become the style to use either no oil or some vegetable oil or even olive oil. That's where things start to slide. We have learned in recent times that good old tallow, beef fat is not as bad for us as we once thought. So I have tallow. Not only is this going into the pan to prepare all of the beef and the vegetables that are going in and impart beautiful flavor, but it's going into the pastry. And that's the secret that we're gonna share with you. It's a butter tallow mix and it makes the pastry unbelievable where you will just say, this is unbelievable. Onion, one medium onion, coarsely chopped, Yukon gold potatoes, and some carrots that were parboiled very, very rapidly. They're not soft, but just took the edge off. Tomato paste, which will bring a richness to the dish. Chopped garlic. This is not necessarily traditional, but I like it. You can do what you want your own pie. We already seasoned, but we have some thyme and some rosemary, traditional British pie flavorings. Here we are at the cooking station, formerly known as the stove. This pot is on medium high. We're going to brown the beef first. So we're going to put in our beef tallow. Oh, you can hear that sizzling and it's smoking already. Absolutely beautiful. And we're gonna drop in now our cubes of beef that we prepared with lots of flour. They're already seasoned. Here's another secret. Don't crowd the pan. First batch of meat is done for now. It's not cooked through, it's just crisp on the outside and a nice crust going, which is flavor, and that's what we want. So we're gonna pull these out, and now we'll just take, shake off some of that flour and drop in, spacing it nicely, the rest of the beef. And that's it, the second batch are just about ready. We'll pull these out to rest, this is the onion, coarsely chopped, that goes in. That's a couple of minutes with the onion. Now go in the potatoes and carrots. We'll move these around. The aroma is now absolutely beautiful and it's pulling off the brown, crispy fond from the bottom. And we're gonna be adding some stock and wine. I think I forgot to mention those earlier, but some stock and red wine are going in here. Couple of minutes with the veggies and the onions, smelling delightful. In goes the garlic so that we're not getting it too brown. And next, a good dollop of tomato paste. This will make the gravy very, very rich. 
Now I'm gonna add my thyme. I do this just by eye, and just what I like in mine. Not a whole lot, but enough to taste it. And of course then some rosemary. That looks good to me. We're gonna add at this stage the meat back in with all juices. Don't waste those juices. Make sure they get into the pot too. The red wine, any red wine will do reasonable. Any red wine will do. Any red wine will do. Cockadoodle do. And we're just gonna pour a good amount in here. I like to go about halfway up the meat. Look how rich this gravy has become. The wine has burned off now, the alcohol's gone, and it's all looking tremendous. Now it's time to add your stock. I have a mix here of actually stock I had left over, so I had some beef, some chicken, but any savory flavor is good. So I'm going to now add this stock, and it should completely cover the meat. Now that's not quite enough, no problem, because this stock is beautifully rich and all of this is going to cook down, I'm just going to add some water. So I have plenty of liquid in here. because This is going into the oven at 375 and it's going to sit in there for probably an hour and a half, two hours. While that's in the oven, let's make the pastry. In this bowl, I have deposited two cups of all-purpose flour. We have a 50-50 mix, one cup, which contains half a cup of butter and half a cup of beef fat, beef tallow. That's the light colored fat there. So this came out of the fridge. I have some ice water that came out of the fridge and also some ice cubes. The colder you keep everything, the better the pastry will turn out. So let's dump in the fat and go to work. And eventually it looks like this. It looks like breadcrumbs and that's exactly how it should look. So let's add just a little bit of water. So easy to go too far with this. An ice cube fell in, we don't need that. But let's just start incorporating this and just push it together. What we're looking for is this consistency where it sticks together and you can form it into a ball, but it's reasonably dry. Don't want it all wet and soggy. It just won't work. So there we have it. And I guess you could go ahead and roll this and top a pie and cook it right now. But it actually gets a little bit better with some time in the fridge, which is great because we are still about another hour, hour and a half away from our filling being ready. So what we're going to do Well-prepared chef is a well-prepared chef. Unfortunately, so we're going to put our ball of dough right in the middle of this cling film wrap and just wrap it so that it doesn't dry out in the fridge, but it cools down in the fridge. Special delivery. There it is right out of the oven and here is our pastry right out of the fridge they need to come together let's take a quick look at what we have in here I did check it a couple of times it's been about two and a half hours but what we have here is an incredibly rich beautiful gravy with the vegetables and the beef that is so tender all that's left to do is to flour our board just a little and then here's our pastry nice and cold from the fridge i like to just push this down before we start rolling and let's go ahead and now roll this from the middle out to the edges and keep it i would say about an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch this needs to warm up just a little bit and then it will start to gel together just fine. I'm gonna put this pie in this elongated dish here so I need to have enough to cover it. 
Looks like we need just a little bit more. Okay, so we have about the right size, about the right thickness. We're gonna hope that it lifts off this cutting board okay. It's always risky. We'll roll it on the pin, roll it back out on here. But first, we better pour our filling into our pie dish. And that just goes right in. Beautifully rich, amazing. Good. Look at how thick and beautiful this gravy is. Thing is, take your time. It's crumbly, it should be. And I'm going to do my best to pick this up and roll it along <laughs> this rolling pin. This could be the end of hours and hours of careful preparation. You have to be so careful. We're losing a little bit here. Pick it up, bring it across. This pastry is going to be beautifully crumbly. That's why it's difficult to work with. That's fine. The taste and the texture will make up for the pain of working with such a difficult substance. But here we go. And let's just quickly, before we lose everything, Let's just place this on the top and roll it out and see the best we can do. How's it gonna look? Did we get away with it? I think so. I think we're gonna be fine. Get rid of the excess. It's not the prettiest pie I've ever seen, but I'll tell you something. It's going to be one of the greatest tasting pies that you've ever tried. Now, we do want to make a, a few cuts here. Three is probably okay to let the steam out as it cooks. And the other thing we want to do is use some egg wash. On this, I just use the yolk of the egg because it's going to give a richer brown to the top than the entire egg. All that's left to do, and this is a lot of pie, is to put it in the oven about 25 to 35, sometimes 40 minutes. Keep an eye on it when it's nice and brown and crisp and golden and good to go. It's good to go. Let's put it in the oven. There it is. It's been in the oven for about 35 minutes, I think, give or take. It's brown, it's beautiful, the smell is amazing. You could let it rest for a little bit and it will be easier to slice and serve, but I don't think I can wait. I think I have to try this and get going. Actually, I should keep one of these because this dish is, of course, very hot. How to serve in a dish like this, I don't know. Never figured it out, but I'm going to take a cut across the pastry. Oh, yes. And then I'm going to take a cut across the pastry here and somehow try to lift a meaningful piece of this out of the dish and onto my plate here. Just have some simple peas, sweet peas ready to go, kind of traditional if it's a British pie, which it is. And then we'll just lift out this beautiful pastry and a filling, which is tremendously rich and flavorful. And there you have it, old fashioned steak pie. The pastry is so flaky, it's so light, it's so beautiful, that's the difference. And starting the cooking, as I said, in the beef fat will make all of that difference. It's pretty hot, this might hurt, but sometimes pain is necessary for gain. Let's see how we did. This is pie heaven. You are always welcome right here in the kitchen. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, get involved, and more importantly, come back and see us next time.